Whoa. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another Thursday. That means another Carvers and Creators, a weekly demonstration and discussion with pumpkin carvers, sculptors, and multi-talented artists from around the world. First, we ask that you please give us a like and a follow on the platform you're watching us on. Let us know in the comments where you're watching from and if you have any questions for the Carvers and our special guest. Let's meet the Carvers. Why not? Let's do it while we're here. Hey, I know that guy. First, he's an artist and sculptor from Boston, Massachusetts. He was a judge on season three of Outrageous Pumpkins on the Food Network. It's Paul Dever. Welcome. Hey, happy Thursday, everybody. Good to see you, Paul. Good to be seen. Happy Thursday to you. Next, he's a multimedia sculpture artist from Tucson, Arizona, and a finalist on Halloween Wars 2019 on the Food Network, Matt Harper. Welcome. Bienvenidos a la playa. <laughs> Our returning guest tonight is an amazingly talented and accomplished trash sculptor. Please welcome Stephanie Sugar Fox Hongo. Welcome. Thank you, guys. I'm very excited to be back. I really appreciate it. We're excited oh, to have you back. We are Absolutely. stoked. We are stoked. They have a million questions. And, uh, this is so great. <laughs> okay. Fabulous. Awesome. My name is Michael Mondragon. I'll be running the show, moderating comments, and chiming in from time to time. <laughs> Matt, be Matt, my eyes are up here. You, oh my <laughs> God, you little monkey. Let's check our sculpts from last week. The subject was hysterical swamp creature. Paul, <laughs> awesome. It's all right. Oh. <laughs> I, I like him. Damn it. It's okay. I, I, I think you, you went such a different direction, Paul. I was like, I did the quintessential swamp guy, and you went like, you went like a turtle, a snapping turtle that was just like, yeah, the, it was, it was, that yeah. was really this cool. Here. I yeah. I, this okay. part, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's, <laughs> <laughs> what don't you like about it? It's still the shape of a squash. Oh, sure. So when I look at it, I could just spin it around, it's still a squash. Yeah, but you know, Same people who aren't like carving squash don't look at that at all. I'm telling yeah. you, that is, that didn't even occur to me. <laughs> well, thank you. But there was a lot of people that carve squash, so I'm kind of like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. So much competition out there. It was, it was a good, it was a good topic from Dan. Like that was, he yeah. kind of threw it out of left field, but that's, that was the thing. I didn't want to do swamp thing and he didn't even say swamp thing he said swamp creature creature yeah but like everybody's mind goes right to swamp thing yeah, yeah. so i yeah. stared yeah. at that thing for a good five ten minutes and was like all right it's gonna start as a turtle <laughs> oh, that's good. Good idea. from the swamp of sorrows yes well, like, it's got, but if it's if it's if it's dan he's got a story behind it right paul i mean like he's got he has to have a name and like and i know stephanie names all of her her amazing Sculpture. So yeah, this guy's got to come up with a whole story behind this guy. Then you know, it's Betty. Or, or, <laughs> Betty the butternut. <laughs> Betty the butternut used to be a butternut and turned into a swamp creature. There's biology involved. There's a whole thing. Uh, the, yeah, Let's check it out. It's on my other website. www. Yeah, yeah. The swamp. The swamp. <laughs> swamp squash. Yeah. Swamp squash. Swamp squash. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, what, do you wish you had more time with it, or do you wish you, or are you just done with it? I wish I had four more squash, like to to add. And like, I, I was thinking like I'd add a shell and I would do all this, and then at the end of the day, it's like I am way down the rabbit hole on this. <laughs> and there's just other projects I'm working on too. Not just not to make an excuse or anything, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. I figured I was about as far as I could get on that without really doing damage to my psyche yeah. or the squash. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you're not liking something and you spend too much time on it, it starts to make you deeply unhappy. Yeah, so, it hurt. You got. And then when I step when I step away, I'm wiped out too. Like I just yeah. stare. Out, I'll stare out the window, just like what just happened. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, I I know all about that. I <laughs> if I'm grumpy for like the rest of the day. If what I'm working on doesn't look good, and I go upstairs and like to eat dinner or whatever, my boyfriend's like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like. It's always the same thing. Just not nothing to do with you. Yeah. Just yeah. Not Just liking what I'm making. You know what's the best when someone gives you advice. Right oh. oh, that's always welcomed. 
be honest. Oh my God. If you, it's <laughs> it's like a three really. stooges with the steam coming out of the. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's really what I need right now is a little pep talk. <laughs> <laughs> Try putting a little top hat on him or something. That'd be nice. yeah, right. <laughs> Have you thought about paint? <laughs> uh, well, Matt, yours is up next. Wow, this is uh, super cool. So I, I went with the dumb swamp thing guy, and I and I, what I, I found myself in the in the in the problem of uh, am I spending way too much time on something I don't even really like? I, I, I kept like trying to figure out where the vines are all going, and like it just took so. There's like a fine line, and Paul, you probably we butted up against it. I'm like, this is not worth the time I'm putting into this, <laughs> and I, 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 that's where I was kind of struggling with. But I'm, I guess I'm happy with it. But, I love it. You do. You always have this ability to kind of weave stuff in and out in such a cool way. And I think Stephanie even just backed it up that we all kind of feel the same way at times where it's like, what the hell am I doing? Yeah. And then you take a look at how long you've been doing that for. And it's like, I can't even get that time back. <laughs> <laughs> but at the, well, usually it comes out, it, it gets to where it needs to be. You know it doesn't mean it doesn't have to be your favorite. I love it. I even they you took great pictures of this one too. Like the lighting's fantastic. Yeah, I love oh. the mouth on it. I really like. And you know the thing too, you guys start these while you're being watched on camera, like you're you're fleshing it out in a live setting, and I, that is insanely hard to do because I, I know for me, I prefer to take a lot of time to do nothing, to just stare at it for a while before mm -hmm. I actually work on anything so the fact that you're just jumping right into it and you're making commitments to things and then you have to roll with those commitments later on that is so much harder than people who don't do this realize we we, we do 90 day fiance weekly it's, it's wild <laughs> truly. it's so much harder than people give it credit for it's and the fact that oh. you end up with these very well-formed beautiful unique things like they're different every week it's it's a testament to you guys. You're you're very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. You are too nice. Thank you. Oh, that put a smile on my face, man. Oh. I know. <laughs> nice. What's that? What's that warm, fuzzy feeling? Oh, oh what is that? Oh, wait, that's the beer. It's a beer. That's the beer. That's <laughs> Well, I work in pixels and vectors, and uh, this week uh, <laughs> I can't I can't get over the word hysterical because hysterical to me is not like uh, like an irrational uh, thing. It's more hysterical being funny. So <laughs> like Eddie Murphy raw. You're right, right, right. Yeah. I, so I, I always go to the comedians, and uh, so this is Florida's uh, the Florida Everglades number one comedian. Are you ready for ma Marsh Madness? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like the spin. <laughs> oh my and, god! Uh, the the joke the joke uh, if you can't see it it says uh, I once saw a sign that said parking area is for frogs only violators will be towed. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Good lord! Yes, I love a pun. Yes, of course. Florida Everglades, the number one comedian, Henny Youngman and Marty Allen. Are there. And Mar Marty and Marty, and the, they're they're on the undercard. So this is. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mick, this is outstanding. Well this done, is so sir. Good. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I was actually very scared about this one because I'm just like, oh no, because I think we had hysterical before, and uh, I did a similar one with with the uh, the chick and the uh, the Steve Martin album cover. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the so I, I, didn't, I, didn't want, I want it to be the same, but but different. So yeah. uh, I, I went with this. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Great awesome. Job. Well, thank you. Thank you for uh, making me creative every week. This is this is always a lot of fun. Um, but Stephanie, I'd like to reintroduce you to the fourth member of Carvers and Creators responsible for our carving subject tonight. It is the hollow wheel, the center spinner. And as always, Paul will tell you more about it right now. There he is. Hello, kids. Happy Thursday. Welcome back, Stephanie. Great to have you back. Uh, we're going to go through the wheel again. A couple new choices on here. Um, this week, for the first spin, we have Gargoyle, Senior Citizen, Guest Choice. I have one ready. Uh, not of this world, Skeletal. <laughs> we left a blank space, so that's going to be Guest Choice again. Fantasy oh. Animal, Classic Monster, Undead, and Demon. Second spin will be Upset. Hysterical, exhausted, guest choice again, euphoric, robust, agony, furious, jovial, or infected. Ooh. I have no idea how that's empty. <laughs> oh. Uh, 
you know, it, I, it, it could have been a, a mouse like rubbed up against it. <laughs> I, maybe I fell asleep or something at the wheel. At the wheel. Oh, <laughs> apparently I did. Nicely done. Another pun. It's just it. pun night here. <laughs> yeah, it's going to land on that. You know it's going to land on that. It's hysterical. I, mean, I yeah. should bet the house on it. <laughs> ah! oh! <Yeah>. no. <laughs> well, Stephanie, you get to choose tonight. Oh, yeah. And, and, and here's what of... we're going to do. Because yeah. I screwed up. Uh -huh. I'm gonna take. We're gonna take the second spin for the attribute or the emotion, and then you'll have a better idea as what you'd like to see us carve based on the emotion. Okay. Yeah. yeah. God, I hope it lands on guest choice again. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> and it landed on the same space. Oh. Wait. <laughs> this is I agony. Would be terrible at that carnival game. <laughs> like, like if agony. I worked there and had to spin it for the people. Okay, so whatever it is is gonna be an agony. And it's your uh, choice. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Can I can I pick from something else that's on that wheel? Do I have to pick something new? Sure. I mean, you know, on, on the wheel, yeah, on the sure. wheel, off the wheel, it's up to you. It's all you, you just can't okay. pick the one that's blank. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> that's gonna be hard. Uh, let's do. Do you want me to read them? Oh, well, you got no, it. No, I can see. I can see. I'm trying to think of what I would want to do. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do, let's do a gargoyle in agony. Nice. Ooh, yeah, okay. I think, Maddie, you were just talking about gargoyle. Yeah, okay. Gargoyle in okay. agony. Okay. Stephanie, oh, nice work. Yeah. You do that's legitimately like it, because that's the one I thought would be the most fun. <laughs> yes, I, I, I'm not saying it's gonna be, yeah. I, not I think that, that I thought it, you guys thought of it, but you know. <laughs> no, that's like a good choice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow, yeah, now the ideas are kind of okay. coming to me here. I keep thinking in multiple squashes lately, like building. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. And then I'm like, well, how? So we got a week <laughs> before the next, like, it's going to take me some time. <laughs> but a gargoyle, a gargoyle is such a great one because there's there's so many. I think who V Neil gave us that one, right? V put it, yeah, V put it on the board. Yeah, so I think that one's wonderful in so many, but it, it, it's, it's open to interpretation, but it, at the same time, it isn't because they sit on a corner of a building, you know, and there's like a, right. a statue, you know, so you got to you gotta have it be, oh, man. All right. I got an Yay. idea. This, this is going to be a lot of blocking out. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Stephanie, you know, you're talking about staring, staring at something for a long time. Right? What's that? Go ahead, Matt. No, I just was say Stephanie was just talking about just staring at something for a long time. Just like, how do I do that? That's what that's I want to do for the next half hour. I'll just stare. Just that's like, that's yeah, what I'll, I prefer I'll, to do. Yeah. And I'll probably have to go like kill my family. I'll beat them up after because I'll be so mad. Like, yeah. <laughs> I truly, I just, I will stare at the board that I'm going to be working on for a while before I actually do anything. And I'm like, what composition would I prefer? Where do I want the eyes? Where do I want the nose? Where should it fall in space? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. And to have to just jump right into it without really giving that the proper think has got to be annoying. Because there's stuff that you, you would have done because it's subtractive. Yeah. So once you make a carve, it's in there and you got to work yeah. with it. I, yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeesh. Yeah, that's all right. Oh. We're trained. I don't know if you know this, but we're trained professionals. Right, right. <laughs> well, at home, kids. <laughs> try, try this at home, kids, or something. Like I'm that. not you, panicking did you at take all. Training to do this? Is there is there a training a course that I don't know about? It's a yeah. it's a it's a manual carving oil, carving oil class. Ah, yeah. gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Well, speaking of carving oil, uh, well, if you're uh, carving or creating with us tonight, we're going to give you five minutes to get everything together and get situated. Um, meanwhile, we're going to go around the horn and see what everybody's carving oil is for tonight. Uh, I will start with uh, Stephanie. Let me uh, bump this while oh, we're yeah. here. What, what, do you, what are you having tonight? It, I'm, I made it like a half hour ago, so it's a little melty, but it's, it's a Maker's Mark Manhattan. Oh, look at that cool glass. With, with a Luxardo cherry, because that's the essential. Oh, beer. that's the $30 thing of cocktail. cherries. <laughs> oh, I love that. Nice. The black cherries. Those are so good. I, they are yeah. very good. They're very expensive, but they're worth yeah. every penny. It's like $30 for a jar of cherries. Wow. 
That's why you never offer a round of them to your friends. No. <laughs> no. You, you don't want extra in yours, do you? No. Okay. <laughs> you can they're, have a maraschino. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, maraschinos. Yeah, that's great. All right. Matt, oh, what do you got? Oh. <laughs> um, I I'm going with um, I, I this is like so basic, but I'm going with a our favorite Monster Palooza beverage, the uh, Firestone Walker yeah, 805. 805. Only because it's it, it's just smooth and goes down so easy. There you go. Yeah, so nothing exciting here. Right it looks around the like corner. one of those little wax candies with the fruit juice inside of them in Matt's hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a 40 ounce. <laughs> Don't squeeze too hard, Matt. Smash the bottle. Oh, smash. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go with an old favorite. And Maddie, I know you like this one. It's the only IPA. So if we do ever do trivia, this would be the answer. It'd be like, what's the only IPA that Matt enjoys? Oh, and no. it's Cloud Candy oh, for uh, oh, nice. a Mighty Squirrel in Waltham, Massachusetts. That is the best Nothing one. fancy, but damn light. Mighty Squirrel. Oh, I like it. Yeah, Mighty Squirrel is fantastic. They make a lot I'm of good beer. for the marketing. Yeah, they are delightful. Those are those are good. I will. They should be a sponsor of the show. I'm just saying. Uh, I think so <laughs> quite a bit. Do you tag them and stuff? Yeah. No, oh. I'm gonna start. I'm usually too drunk by the time I start. <laughs> Check it out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is a great, great beer from Mighty Squirrel. Yes. Well, maybe, they, Mighty maybe they'll have us do some uh, some can art for the holidays. Oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> Oh, we got to put. Oh, hey, we got to put squirrel on the board. Oh, yeah, well, when I, we'll see. We'll see <laughs> wow, so committed to the uh, <laughs> promo here. Thank you, thank you. Sure. <laughs> you can chastise me off air. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, well, what do you have? Uh, Mighty uh, this this one is the. I was gonna say um, this is modern Ooh. times. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's still modern times around. So this is uh, the teleportation sweater. Uh, great name. Uh, they, they always come out with these uh, seasonal beers, and then uh, they have these really great, this really great can art. So um, hazy India pale ale, uh, one of my favorites. So uh, cheers to all of our creations tonight. Thank you for joining us. Um, clink. Clinky clinky clink. <laughs> so i wanted to start off stephanie you last time you were here um we thoroughly enjoyed meeting you for the first time but since that's happened uh so much has happened to you yeah um and you had some <laughs> big stuff happen to you so tell me more about this and how it happened and i'm going to go through some other stuff and you can describe it as well Oh, I look so much more tan. Um, so I was in People <laughs> Magazine, which is incredible. I, That's amazing. Yeah. So should I go through the whole story of it? I don't know. Is that a yeah. Story? Yeah. It's yeah, not come on. Like it's that you couldn't even story. tell us last time. Yeah. You, yeah you were, no, I, I sat already, on that for a while. You, you, so, you already shot it, I think, right? You'd already shot all the yeah. pictures. And, yeah. You know all about 100%. it. Yeah. So um, the woman reached out to me. It was in um, November of 2021 and she was like i'm from people magazine we really like your work we'd be interested in doing a story on you and immediately when i got the email i screenshot it and i sent it to my sister and she's like that's fake and i was like is it though and she's like i'm gonna google her name so she googled and she's like there's a woman by that name that works at people magazine and i was like i i'm gonna at least answer the email so I did, and the back and forth, and she, it was legit. And she was like, we really like what you do, and we want it for, like, this good uh, vibe story that we do, like, little features. Um, would you be interested? And I was like, 100%. So she was like, send me uh, just images of the work that you've done that you're proud of. And, um, you know, we might look into maybe doing, like, a photo shoot of a new piece. And I was like, well, if you're interested in doing that, my brother-in-law is a cameraman for ESPN and he also does photography on the side. He's very, very good. He might be able to do a shoot so you wouldn't have to send anyone out here. And she was like, yeah, we, we would pay him for his time. So um, it was a quick turnaround in getting everything going. Uh, my brother-in-law, Shane, came over very shortly after that. We took the pictures around Christmas time and then got them sent in. And then I sat on it 
for wow. like six goddamn months. And I was just like, when the hell is this happening? Because I want to tell everyone I know. It's yeah. so exciting that I, I had to sit on it. And then my intention was to wait until it came out in print in the physical magazine. And I didn't tell my parents. So what oh, I was yeah. going to do is just go to their house and be like, hey, flip to page 19 and then see their reaction. It would be amazing. And then yeah. <laughs> And then when it came out, the week that it came out, they got COVID. And I was like, oh, oh. shit. So I couldn't go over there to give them a magazine, especially. So we had like a plan. It was a long story. We had a, a trip planned too. So whatever. But I ended up needing to just like text them and be like, hey, I have something to tell you. So I, I video chatted with them and I was like, I'm in People Magazine. And they were very excited, but it was very much the opposite of what I was planning on doing for six uh, months. I was like, I can't wait to tell my parents. And then, yeah. and then it didn't happen the way I wanted, but it's still amazing. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous news. It doesn't make it any less awesome. It doesn't, but it makes it a little less fun for me. <laughs> yeah, well, and nothing ever goes as planned. A good no. pessimist once told me, and by once told me, I mean, I told myself, it's always going to go wrong. It's <laughs> never going to go the way you want it to go. More often than not, it's just the varying levels of how wrong it can go. Correct. <laughs> well, got a long trip, you're almost out of gas. That's that's how it goes. Shit, I got to stop. If it's if it's any help, I, I I'm in here in little Tucson, Arizona, and I like knew. I think I'd seen that day that you had published that you put something out there. And I'm in the in the produce aisle, and I'm in the uh, supermarket aisle, like checking out, and I'm like. Everybody and I like my whole family all stand. I'm like there, there she is. Like it was like really fun. <laughs> so I have the I have the um, that um, I think I don't. I think that's the only People magazine I own. But that's oh, the... thank you. Yeah, but it's yeah, the only you're... People magazine I own too. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Good reason though. Excellent. Yeah, reason. this one. Yeah, absolutely. What a what a cool honor, man. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm bummed they, get, they only give you one page. It should it should have been like a full like you know six page you know. But like 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 Ooh, a spread was, like this one. Spread yes, yeah. like that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Someone, gosh. Yeah, they had um. So she had she had mentioned the woman that I spoke to the um the the reporter that I spoke to. She had mentioned that it might be a spread, and she was like, "I'm pushing for it. We'll see what happens." And then she's like, "Bad news. They broke it down to one page." I was like, Whatever it's in there, it's fine. Yeah, you're yeah, you mentioned. Did did it get you? Did it, I mean, like other than just like the the cool notoriety and with your friends, did, did did that instantly get you more business, or was it like a did it? it what was the translation? I think it. Did. It's hard to say because around that time, I had already found a nice stride with selling, so it's hard to say exactly what audience from that translated into people who actually purchased work there was definitely an uptick in followers but followers doesn't necessarily mean better business it, it right. could just mean followers which no, you know right. obviously followers are still fabulous and very essential yeah. um so it's hard to say what exactly came from that in terms of business but there there definitely is a nice consistency with my making and my selling of my work and i, I don't think that i mean obviously it must have helped it yeah. there's no way it didn't help it right right Hard to quantify, I imagine. Yeah. yeah, right. It's it's hard to say. There wasn't really a direct, uh, you know, comparison that I could be making. Yeah. Yeah, and and I think that if I looked it up, I mean, it was on it was online as well. So it was, um, yes. and, and just the way that people consume like print magazines now is not what it used to be. No, no, not at all. So I was. It's interesting when I when I found out that it was happening and that I was going to be in a physical magazine. That delighted me so much. And it like, just because everything's online now, everything. So the fact that it was going to be physically printed and that I could hold it made me more excited than if it was just printed online. But at the same time, there is that necessity to have it be in both forms because you want to be able to ha add your links to things and have people be able to read the story and, you know, connect the legitimacy of your work to a credible source and all that kind of stuff. So both things are really, really great, um, and they both have their parts about them that I really was very happy, to, happy to have. That's great. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, the physical representation always will, that'll go with you the rest of your life. You can always like yeah. this is me and yeah. yeah, yeah, like I framed it. It's, it's hanging on my wall. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, that's a that's a that's a big deal. Um, when I saw that you did this, this is um, I actually um, actually bowled right next to uh, Drew Carey. Did um, you? <laughs> it, was, you know, it was in it was in Studio City. It was right before he got the that job too. And I was like, uh, so I was like, I go, oh, that's cool. And it's like, oh, wait a minute, uh, like I it kind of all came. I'm like, wow, that's so. How did this come about? I mean, this is um, k- kind of cool that you got to do it specifically um, for him. Yes. So this is because I was a little bit connected. So my twin sister used to nanny for the show's producer. So she knows of my work and she was like, it's going to be Drew's anniversary of hosting the show. And we really want to get him something, but you know, he's got everything that he already wants. So we want to get him something unique. So we thought that having a piece of art made, and especially like the idea of having a piece of art that could reflect the show in some way, but have it be, you know, like a little funkier, I think she liked the idea of. So um, it became this idea of like, let's use something iconic from the show. So it ended up being the dollar sign. Mm -hmm. And then I took basically all the stuff that could be representative of the show, everything from like, you see the video game in the corner, like the N64 controller. And then like, there's like smaller things like razors or like little tiny suitcases and like a Barbie that's supposed to be representative of like the, the ladies in the showcase and, you know, Mm -hmm. just all the kind of stuff that you would find on the prices. Right. And just throw it in there as like a, a kind of a collage of all of the show's things, but it's muted. So it's not very obvious right away, which is kind of in keeping with what my work, what I kind of want my work to be Yeah, is that you have to look closely for it to kind of, be understood as a collection of, of junk essentially so good cool. Stephanie. thank you yeah i think that's one of the things that's about your work that's really because a lot of people just consume things and they just kind of throw it away or just they get distracted by something else and do it but i think the one thing that's really great about it and, and it'll it'll show in a, the other pieces that i show as well that even I did did a similar thing. Like I looked at this as a whole. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Because obviously I see like the controller up top. Mm-hmm. But then when I got close into it, I'm like, oh, wow, there's like a razor in there. And there's like yeah. the littler things, even the, the the plug, the you know, that goes into a socket and the little cars and stuff like that. So then I started doing that with all of your work when I was making this deck. And I'm like, there's so much more to be appreciated that it's it takes a little bit more time, but the investment is definitely worth it. Thank you. Yeah, agreed. Thank you very much. Yeah, the, it, your, your work always does make somebody look further and deeper into it and go, wait, that's a fork. Wait a minute. That's a, wait, that's a, I see the tube, but wait, is it, there's just like a, you know, a, a, ball, a, a toy from McDonald's stuck in there. It's like, it's just all, all really, really, and it kind of lends to a question. So when it comes to like, when you're making something and you're, and you're looking at a piece of trash or, you know, seeing something, do you, do you see them? individually as like something like um i this could be a perfect you know eyeball or cheek or neck or something like or or is it just kind of that the form while you're making something and you just pick okay there's my cheek or neck or eyeball is it what comes first sometimes the the piece of junk will um will be an inspiration for what it gets used for but more often than not I will be in the process of making a specific type of thing and I will go looking for X, you know, product variable that fits that specific shape requirement or whatever it is. So it it usually comes as a necessity for trying to like fill a brief. But um, sometimes there's things that I'll find that I'm like, this is really cool and it would make an excellent X, Y, Z. Okay. Okay. Well, so with that being said, when you when you're looking for specific things, what's the number one piece of junk you're looking for? What is your favorite vinyl tubing? Thing vinyl you tubing. cannot live without. What is it? Vinyl, vinyl tubing. Hundred percent. I love vinyl tubing. <laughs> it's my favorite thing to use. Um, it, and especially because it comes in like so many different diameters. So there's like very thick vinyl tubing that's great for structural stuff, which you wouldn't. Feel, at least I, I don't know. I probably wouldn't assume if I hadn't already done it that it would be as 
structurally sound as it is and be as, as instrumental in like making the foundation for pieces as it's been. But the thick stuff is great for that. And then the very thin stuff is excellent for basically like um, like tracing around the eyes or like trying to form finer details. It works very much the way that like a um, a painter or someone that draws might do line work. Like it, it just, it works in in that way. I can, I can use it um, and it's always symmetrical. I don't have to worry about varying different shapes. I can, I, I, I just love it. It's, it's, yeah. it's great. I can see that. What's yeah. the number one, what's the number one item people offer you that you don't want? <laughs> yes. <laughs> great, one. great question. Paul. Oh God. I don't know. All the things, all their stuff. <laughs> they just, all the time, all their stuff. All, all the things. <laughs> it's just, it's just always like, if you ever need junk, we're a family with uh, a lot of, you know, and I just, I'm like, I. We got a big carbon footprint, this family. <laughs> I really appreciate it. The, and the, the horrible, like, I can't, I have to, I have to very much remind myself that just because it's not a new, it, it, it may not, they've never said it to me. I've heard it a zillion times, but they've never said it to me. So it's not like they're, they're being annoying by repeatedly saying it to me, but they're like the 375th person to say it to me. So they don't know that. So I can't, I can't come at them with that energy. Like I don't want your junk. So I have to every single time, like a very cookie cutter, very kind, just like, thank you so much. I really appreciate you trying to help the cause, but, I, <laughs> but still people just drop it on my doorstep. I don't even ask for it. And we just like show up and we're like, Oh, there's trash on the doorstep. I wonder who this is. <laughs> So your recycling bit is just constantly full. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the thing is, too, people probably are, you know, in a, in a selfish way, probably thinking, you see that tube right there? That yeah. I brought her yeah. that. Yeah. I brought her that. Also, yeah. to that degree, though, I will say there's plenty of people that have reached out to me and said, I have this. Do you want it? And sometimes I really do. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I will take that if you can drop it off or I can come get it, whatever it might be. So there's yeah. certain things that I'm always looking for and jazzed when someone reaches out saying that they had it because I'm, I'm more than willing to take it. But if people are just like, you can come look through my attic. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> Clean out my attic for me for the sake of art. Oh, yeah. my God. There, there was a little bit in the in the Simpsons where Homer went to a car show and there was this girl and she was kind of like uh, this model standing next to like a new car and uh, guys would come up to her and they go, do you come with a car? And she would just giggle and go, oh, <laughs> you. and oh, then you. the next yeah. guy would come up and say the exact same thing. And she would <laughs> just giggle. Oh, you. <laughs> I mean, it works. Just I remember that episode. Girl. <laughs> Oh, thanks. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Well, this this was a, a pretty big one as well. No. Yeah. Oh, God. It's the whirlwind tour for you. See, you know what? You, you got to come on our show more often because look what happens. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, this is – it's collateral. I get it. I mean, it, I'm you know? saying anytime you, you guys want to have me on, I'm more than happy to drink whiskey and watch you guys work shit. Exactly. <laughs> I – how was oh, yeah. that? that well, was how fun. was that whole experience? It just seems it like a lot of fun. fun. It was not fun. I'm going to be very honest. I hated oh, it. Oh, it was not fun. No. Okay. Oh, no. I hated it. <clears throat> so here's the thing. And this is going to sound, I, I already sound like a dick saying that because it's an excellent opportunity. Thank you so much. Like, I, I understand that, you know, I don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth, but frankly, it was, it sucked because I sat, I truly sat in front of my computer for I think 10 hours, I didn't move because the producer put the fear of God in me that they were going to go live any minute and I had to be available and it didn't happen that way. And the whole process of like, basically that I had to meet with them. They hated my shirt. They wanted me to change my shirt. And then they oh, were wow. like, here, here's your lighting. We have to, you know, frame you up all this stuff. And then they were like, Kelly loves red. Do you have red? So I put on red. And then, um, I basically Kelly had a conversation with, uh, one of their producers, I think it was. And she was like, I'm just going to ask you a series of questions. I want you to answer them honestly. And then, you know, from that, we're going to basically formulate what we're going to ask you. So I was like, okay, great. So we went through it. And then basically what they do is they give you a script of basically what you said. They truncate what you say and they hand it back to you. And they're like, these are your lines, memorize them. You don't have to be okay. verbatim, but 
basically pretend that you know you're you're reading a script essentially oh my so gosh. i was practicing practicing this thing all morning in my head and then when i read it back to them they were like okay well you're not saying it verbatim and i was like i was told that it didn't have to be verbatim like what the hell <laughs> so we had to go over it a bunch of times they had to like approve like my changing of two words or something i don't know but it, anyway it was it was stressful it was a lot of like hurry up and wait and yeah. i just i was having a hard time like staying positive through all of it because they were they oh. were being i don't know it was just it wasn't great producers it was very daytime tv it was very saccharine and fake and i was just like mm, i'm not into this i'm mm. gonna do this again yeah no first of all the only thing that kelly really loves other than red is justin everybody remembers the movie right <laughs> all right i do remember that justin <laughs> oh, wow <laughs> <laughs> it was like 2000 or something like that <laughs> she you know a moment like this is yeah really exactly and you waited 10 hours for that moment and then they just they needled you and needled you you should have just hung up and been like well go live now now there's nothing <laughs> you have I, guess I'm, I feel bad saying that to you know obviously it's excellent the opportunity and i shouldn't be shitty about it but it was not fun Paul, yeah, but Paul, it's, we're, it's, we're on the we have, we're red. That's all I got to say. Right. But listen, <laughs> the one thing you got to remember about this is yes, great opportunity and, and, and all that, but it's a they don't have shit guests on. They have guests on that put people's eyes on the screen. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. You gotta kind of, you know, if 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 it if it ever happens to us, we're gonna be like, listen, we'll wear whatever freaking color we want. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we're gonna and we and even though even though we're remote, only green M and M's in the set <laughs> for everybody. Even though we're I not, need, I, need a, I need a bottle of Maker's Mark too. I don't know how. They yeah. get that <laughs> and you and Matt will make the producer drink it for him. He's all banged up by the time we go on. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the little things, you know. It really is. I mean, they always make you feel like. Like you're lucky to be there, but but are you? You're not in television. Like somebody who wanted to be an actor or an actress or be in that, yeah, they're lucky to be there because you're lucky to be working. Somebody that's invited to be on, treat them like a guest. Like you're a guest. You're supposed to treat people a certain way. You know, it wasn't like they were very nice, but I felt like everyone was talking to me like I was a little kid, and I was oh. like, I okay, <laughs> okay, guys, yeah. <laughs> That's what headsets will do. They got the little microphone and mm -hmm. the they it's talk like, very, like this. What? Very kid gloves, very soft voices, very like, don't want to upset anybody, but here's what we're talking about. Yeah. Stay yeah. calm. Uh, well, I don't know. Wow. Well, still a great opportunity. And it was still it was. very exciting for us to see you get on there. A hundred percent. I, you know, but I would not do it again, I don't think. <laughs> oh, yes, you would. But I you would literally though. be like, shut up. I'll wear whatever oh, I you want. You don't know me very well. I would not. I was a stubborn <laughs> person. Oh, no. I, I feel like we're cut from the same cloth. I would do the oh, same thing. Like, but here's thing. the deal. I'm going to wear, I'm going to wear something that conflicts with a green screen. On <laughs> and then I'm going to put a filter on when we go live so that I don't have a body. What are you going to do? We're live. You That's how you get it. <laughs> what do I have with vertical stripes on it? Okay. Right. How right. do I cut my nose off to spite my face on TV? Mm, that's the way to do it. Uh, so good. So, so good. good. One of the and things I can... love, if, hey, I, I know you got a million things to show, Paul, Mickey, but I, I one of the things I just love about the work you sh you, you put out on, on Instagram is, is your progress shots and your process shots. Because it really does kind of sh showcase the different pieces of, of stuff you use. Like this is perfect, Mickey. You are a genius. Thank you. <laughs> like, like when I when I see this stuff, it just yeah. kind of gives me a little peek into your mind of how you construct it. Which this this horse, by the way, whiskey neat. I think is yeah. the name. Yeah, yeah. I, is is like when I saw that, I, I I remember I I I wrote you a thing. I'm like, this you is did, I yes. love this guy. I absolutely love it, and it just. It is like one of my favorites you've ever done, but but just seeing all these, pro I, I cannot imagine this additive thing. Paul and I struggle with. It. We'll we'll say it out loud. But when but Matt, Matt tool, struggles with it, I, I struggle. With it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, well, like because because you're starting from you're starting from like literal pieces of garbage, and then and then to to come up with that is just like is brilliant. I and then to paint it the way you did, and the 
and and you and it has like this like soft you know, you want to pet him you want to hug him i mean i i there's like it has like a soul in it it's just beautiful i but i just anyway my whole point is the 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 fact that you're you're so diligent with putting in the progress pictures i i just i eat them up I, i'm sure other your fans of yours really do like seeing that because it's when you see the final product it's great but then to see you know the the, the, the thought process behind it is even better thank you i th honestly i think that's the most interesting part about the type of work that i do is the fact that it is made from junk like that's the whole that's that's the thing that's what's impressive yeah. about it so i think that i would be doing myself a disservice not to share the progress of it because mm. that's that's kind of like the whole point of it is is what it's made of so um it's yeah. this, this one though jesus christ this one like this was this was a grumpy week for me i was having a hard <laughs> time with the piece i redid those eyes three four times something like that it just they were in the wrong spot for a while um and it was because i just miscalculated where the eyes would be in comparison to where the muzzle was in comparison to the top of the head and when i started to adjust each of those things the other things were out of place so and the wow. eyes ended up being the thing that was the easiest to course correct so that's what i ended up working on for a while and it was it was rough yeah you can actually see that in the kind of the middle pictures yeah yeah so yeah. i really like and i've gotten to the point too especially when i do like a a bust like this where it's like a 360 you can see it from all sides i spend an exorbitant amount of time trying to predict where the eyes are going to fall because the eyes are everything if the eyes are wrong the whole piece is gonna look stupid so yeah. when i first put those eyes in i was like yes yeah, oh, oh, what could go wrong with this? Like, what? Think of all the things. Where is this going to be? Where is this? Gonna, and I was wrong. I was wrong. But I was able to fix it. I think so. It um, it worked out. He he, he even looks young. I mean, you, you it looks like you have a like a yeah, juvenile like horse. It's a foal, <laughs> right? It's just yeah, I, 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 yeah sure. Everything about it, it just has it has like a little personality. Anyway, I'm such a fan of this one. Yeah, that horse hasn't bitten a kid yet. That's like yeah. a young. <laughs> you can still, you can still, yeah, walk behind this one without getting picked. <laughs> no, but to your point, man, I know what you're saying about the the progress shots. You have a real understanding of anatomy. Like you're building muscles with the PVC mm -hmm. too. Like you're just replacing clay or any anatomical layer by layer with found items which is like insanely hard to do and and, and your your understanding of color and paint like when you're done like you know where it's gonna where the shadows are even gonna hit with it like mm -hmm. not the shit would you like chill out give the rest of us a fighting chance the the painting is my favorite part i have people every single day that are just like there's comments that like you should have left it unpainted it looked cooler unpainted what? painted please don't paint it and I understand, you know, there's there's all different aesthetics out there. If you prefer it that way, there are a ton of assemblage artists that do it that way, that will just build it and they'll leave it that way. But that is, number one, not what I'm going for in the aesthetic. I, I want to make it look like as close to the animal as possible, in which case you have to do, you have to paint it. Because if right. you leave it unpainted, it's not yeah. going to look that way. And number two, painting is my favorite part. I, I love doing it. I love seeing like all of the the different colors and all of the different shapes and patterns that you can see as individual things just like snap together and become like one solid structure. That yeah. is so gratifying for me that I, I, unless like something especially stands out to me as amazing unpainted, I will continue to paint them. I, I prefer it that way. It's not. No, you it, should. I, unpainted is not what I'm interested in. Yeah. Oh, you have to. It finishes it off. The person that's saying you should have left it unpainted is the same person that gave you the pink pool noodle that they wanted to tell their friends <laughs> that they contributed yeah. to your artwork. I need it to maintain its integrity. Betty, Betty, you see the pink noodle? That's me. That's all me. <laughs> I made that. So, Stephanie, I want to ask you a question because this this is something that that occurred to me when I when you were um, when we were t during this discussion. So, it is very common right now for artists to share their process. That didn't always. Uh, that always wasn't the case. 
And like, for instance, like the great works of art, you never saw them in progress. You saw the final. And even like 20 years ago, like no, no one was sharing their process very rarely because they were trying to keep the trade secrets of what they did or whatever. Right. Okay. So my question to you really quick, uh, before I continue my point is, did you ever work under like a creative director? No. Okay. So that's why you are comfortable with sharing your process. Why is that? Because yeah, I awesome. have worked under a creative director and it is disheartening as an artist to get constant feedback oh. on what you do that <laughs> I do not. And I just realized this in my head. This is why it, uh, it really is very hard for me to share my process because I don't want to hear that because I don't need that feedback. That feedback really, really stunts my, my progress of where I'm going. Yeah. Huh. So in order to be relevant in today's world, you have to share and you have to share your process and you have yeah. to do all that stuff. So the fact that you said that, that it irritates you when people chime in and they give you, yeah. the, oh, don't paint it. It's like that. Those are your creative directors yep. that yep. are saying that. And it's like, it's, it's, it's very difficult. So I, I was trying to figure out like, why don't, why, why is it hard for me to share like what you shared here? And, and uh, so maybe, maybe that's a different way of looking at it. Potential. Yeah, yeah, that no, that makes sense. I mean, I've got versions of that too. That I so to that point, very often when I share something like this, it's when I've already figured out the problem. Like I've already gotten right. past it, and now I'm willing to share what I went through to get there because now it's already taken care of. I don't have to worry about what other people want to hand me in terms of advice because I've already taken like it's already been done. So it, that part doesn't even it never matters because there's kind of no, there's no space for it to fill because it's already been said and done. It's already gone. It's already gone, been gone through. So, you know, I mean, not always, sometimes, sometimes I will share stuff in the process of making it, but more often than not, I'm well past the step that I'm sharing. When yeah, yeah, yeah. You've already got the pictures. You've got the catalog of yeah. pictures. You just take, take it anyway. Yeah. Okay. I, I, try, I try to do that. That's a great, that's yeah, that's so. The, so there's a time to to share the process. Yeah. That makes total sense. Yeah, Not, I don't. I don't do it when I'm feeling the most vulnerable about it because I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want anyone to say anything to me that could send me off the rails because it could happen because I'm so sensitive. So. Right. 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 No, it's it's <laughs> you know? very yeah exactly. So, um, good. Good. That that's good to know. That's good for, just for me yeah. to even know. Like, Noah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, and this is a, another perfect case of like, you know, you see it far away. You don't get the, the quite the nuances as when I looked at it. I'm like, oh, the bubbles are actually screws and, <laughs> and there, the, uh, there's forks. You cut forks. Uh, it's like there's so much to this. It's so I've amazing. Got, so I've made so many seahorses. They're, they're one of the more popular things that I make. I think it's a lot of because a lot of my um, my client base tends to be ladies with beach houses. I think that that's kind uh. of, my <laughs> but it's a ton of seahorses that I've made. I've made like 15 of them, maybe more than that. Wow. So, um, I've kind of come down with like a, there's not really a formula for anything else except for seahorses. I really like using a Barbie foot or a shoe for the, the snout. Yeah. Oh, I really yeah. like using, um, forks for like the, the framing of the, the back of the head and into the neck. I think it's, it, they work really well that way. I never me even either. noticed the shoe till you said that. Mm -hmm. Me either. I wouldn't be even thought of it. Most of the seahorses that I've made, especially like the last, I think the like the last six or seven have been like a Barbie shoe or a foot for the snout. I'm going to send you on my Barbie shoes. I have so many. I, will take them. <laughs> I truly, Barbies are one of the things that I'm a big fan of. Like Barbies and all of their little, uh, you know, various accoutrements. I'm a big fan. <laughs> Is it okay that Matt's a size 16 Barbie shoe? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> but the, but the dream house part, I, you know. Yes. That's pretty impressive. It's just, it's just hard to get me up the escalator when you crank it on the side. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> elevated. But um, on, on um, another random question I had related to, like, you you name everything. Um, do you name the ones, like, if, if you're doing a whole bunch of, like, series of, of, of these seahorses and stuff, do you, name, do you name these as well and kind of have them as, go as the the name of that to, to, the, to the person buying it? Yeah, this is Tully. Ah, then the answer is yes. 
guy name all. I, I I love that about you. You 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 name it because it's personal. It's like you you you're spending your time. You you're gonna name it like you would like a an animal. It's beautiful. I truly I do it. It helps put like a period on it when I make it. It helps me. You know, people, all the time people are like, "How can you part with your work? Don't you feel some sort of precious kind of uh, ownership to it?" And I do. They're my, all my babies, but I feel like naming it and giving a personality to it kind of puts a nice little period on it, and it helps me part with it more than keep it. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody, yeah, no, but it, yeah. it does to me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I th I think you're also in giving it to other people, you're also giving the joy of it as uh, a way you're giving joy to other people as well, you know, to have something that's really special that you made, you know, and uh, yeah, there's, there's a part in, in releasing that to the world. And, you know, if you love something, you know, set it free. Right. Um, but that's, that's, I think that people enjoy your work so much that it's like, it's, it, you're giving the joy out of, of it. There, there have been a couple that I didn't want to part with, but for the most part, they're, they're, you know, I'm just happy that someone else really loves it and wants it. That, that makes me happier than the idea of keeping it. Yeah. Yep. And, yeah. and you know, and making is, something like this didn't exist in the world at one point and you made it. It's like, so there's something special in that. I mean, uh, these are amazing. Yeah. Uh, you're, 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 um, your your octopus. Octopus. you're awesome. Yeah, Paul and I are big fans of the octopus. I think one of the things I, when you talked about the tubing part, obviously this come the organic forms you can make out of the tubing has got to be really fun. I imagine. Yeah, the two well, a lot of tubing goes into making each octopus piece, um, which obviously you can see. Um, they're one of my favorite things to make. I've made I don't even know like sixteen octopus pieces. No more than that, I think <laughs> at this point. But I will wow. continue to make them because I absolutely love doing them. And octopus are some of my favorite creatures on Earth. I think that they're the so brilliant. fascinating. Yeah. Every, like I learned, I follow a couple of octopus accounts on both um, Instagram and Facebook, and I learn something new every day. They're amazing creatures. Yeah, they're smarter than I thought. I didn't know they could use Instagram. <laughs> they, they, they're not very good at it, but they don't. Use it. <laughs> Probably got more I, followers than all. You know, like the chameleon gets all of. I think, like when little kids talk about color changing animals, the chameleon is always the one that people talk about. The octopus is far superior to it. Like the chameleon takes like thirty seconds to change its color, but I think the octopus can do it in milliseconds. It's like a yeah. immediate. It's Plus, fluid, like, yeah. The texture, the texture of its skin too, not just the color. It's it's wild yeah yeah, yeah so, screw the chameleon right I'm saying. <laughs> if, if there's a theme for this if today's show it's called screw the chameleon yeah yeah how do you get that title, get that title. <laughs> if anybody leaves with one piece of information that we are we're definitely gonna die on this hill it's chameleon yes Long it's always been that way, though. It's kind of part. It's kind of the part of the show. Yeah, yeah we, we talk right. about it a lot off air, but uh, finally it's made the air. <laughs> <laughs> that is a hot topic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that one! Wow. Ain't no yeah, your, paint, your paint work is tremendous. I swear, it really is. Oh, thank you. Now, is. you are you Do you use airbrush or is it primarily spray no, paint, or you just use whatever you do? It's, it's all spray paint, paint, except for very fine details. So like um, the little, the white around Vera's eyes, I went in with a brush and I did that. And I did the black of her eye with a brush, but everything else is done with spray paint. Cause it's like, I, I got an airbrush gun and I tried to use it for like maybe 45 minutes. And I think I got a, a shitty, you know, just cheap version. Cause it kept sputtering and, Wow. I read the manual and I watched YouTube videos and I was trying to figure it out and I just got frustrated and I was like, you know what? I'm fine with spray paint. I can do spray paint. It's fine. I'll just get better at this. <laughs> I kind of feel the same way. It just the 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 fumes from the spray paint when I wake up on the floor. It's like I should probably go back to the airbrush. <laughs> I, so my boyfriend's an HVAC and he's very handy. So he built me like this whole ventilation system. Oh, an exhaust. Oh, there you go. And, you yes, had a boy. Yes. Nice man. We're set there up. Go. That's great. Mm -hmm. Nice. I too am an HVAC and never did the same for myself. So he must really love you and I must hate myself. Well, you know, it's easier. Like, but I'm sure if your wife wanted it, you'd be like, I'll set you up, honey. Here you well, go. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. That's a good point. Not I'm like, yourself. wow, my lungs can handle it. I'm fine. Yeah. 
Or yeah. now I just go, I'll wait till the spring and I'll just do it outside. Do it outside. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I think I um there's a question here like where where do you get your trash? <laughs> or I, is it is it technically trash or is it you know it's your it's your art supplies I should, sure. I should technically technically it's not trash in the sense that like I don't go dumpster diving I've never had to do that except for one time I made um I did a mural installation for uh, the parks department in Bristol Connecticut and as part of an effort to kind of work with the community they wanted me to go to the transfer station and pull stuff for the mural. So that one time I, I pulled from the trash, but typically what it is, is, um, you know, myself, friends, family, sometimes members of my community, I'll go on like my local Facebook group and I'll be like, Hey, does anyone have any vinyl tubing that they're going to throw away or any deflated basketballs? I will take them and I'll take from them, but I don't have to go much further than that. And honestly, I've done that so many times earlier in my career doing this that I have so much collected at this point that I kind of don't need anymore unless I have some very specific need for something like the vinyl tubing or like a basketball. I really like basketballs. They work great for ears. They're very much um, like skin and they hold paint or uh, spray paint really well. So um, specific things I will ask for, but more often than not, I don't need things because just friends and family keep me in constant supply. So it's just like, you know, it's so awesome. Yeah. 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 We actually, I actually have an example of the basketball one. I think it's a couple of slides down, but um, yeah, these, there's another in work, uh, yeah. Matt. I love it. So do, do you, do you spend a lot of time? I mean, cause Paul and I don't have the luxury sometimes of, of having, uh, you know, examples of what we're going to carve when, when the wheel tells us what to carve until yeah. later. We, we'll go right. back and we'll look up things, you know, post, the show and say, all right, well, what is a, you yeah. know, what does a <laughs> gargoyle look like? But um, yeah. in your case, do you, do you spend a lot of time with references? Because they look yes. spot on, you know. Yes, I will. I mean, I always, oh my God. So I want to ask you guys, I will answer that question, then I have a, a side for you guys. Okay. So, yeah. <clears throat> um, yes, I always pull from references. There's been a couple times where I've made larger pieces that I felt as though having a three dimensional. Um, like a little figurine or something to look at would be helpful. When I made the bison that I made, I did that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the moose that I made, like bigger pieces that I, I felt a little in over my head. I will get a three-dimensional thing to look at. But usually it's just kind of pull references online of, um, you know, for this, in this specific instance, a sphinx cat from the front, from the side, three-quarter views, up and down yeah. like so that way you can and always like the same kind if i can get the same pose that's ideal right. um so i can see it from all different angles because you know you need reference material yeah 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 um but i was what i was gonna say so <clears throat> i saw this thing online a while back and it was something along the lines of uh, you know like a meme saying like oh my God, did you guys know that not everybody can visualize things in their head and they use the Apple? Do you know what I'm talking about? The Apple oh. thing? Okay, mm -hmm. so there's varying levels. Some people don't, if you ask them to visualize an Apple, there's like a scale from five to one, five being seeing nothing and one being seeing like a fully fleshed out Apple in your mind's eye. And okay. some people don't see anything. And there's like, like I said, varying levels in between those two things. And when I first saw it, I looked at it and I was like, oh, I'm number one. I can totally see when I think of an Apple, I, I see it hundred percent in my side. Yeah. It's completely developed. But then I really thought about it and I was like, no, I'm an artist. I, if you asked me to sit down and draw an apple, I would need reference material. I can't just do that from my memory, oh, really? which means that I'm not seeing an apple 100% the way that I thought of, I, I did. So then I really thought about it and I was like, I see like kind of like an icon, like not even, there's barely anything. You know what I mean? There's like not much there. Like I could kind of do an apple. But I think, oh, I think artists are like the grand example of that. If you can completely form an apple, then you're seeing an apple 100% in your mind. But if if you need a reference, are you? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like think about it. Okay, so five being you see nothing. Four okay. being you see like an outline of an apple. Three being you see it in black and white. Okay. Two is basically like an icon of an apple. 
And number okay. one is a hundred percent fully fleshed, beautiful apple. What do you see? What I see. Uh, well, which one are we talking about? Because I can see a honey crisp. I can see a Macintosh. I can see a. <laughs> I can. So you, could, I can you, could, you could sculpt a fully formed apple. I could fully. Breakfast. I could sculpt a a different kind of apple. Like a perfect apple. Well, I mean, to me. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, but like, I could like, like even if so, if I could paint like you could, right? I could do my best and probably with like pencils come decently close to a representation of it. But I know the I know the way the yellows, you know, depending on like Macintosh has a lot of the the green gradient into a yellow with yeah. the red, and there's some spots. And if you get a honey crisp, yeah. it's got like this almost like a white paint wash in ways where it's, it's got dots, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. The dots, and then and then you get the um red delicious a super dark red and they have a little yeah. bit of veining in them so yeah i'm like a what is it one you're a one I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, yeah i'm a one yes finally <laughs> number one at something Jeez, good, 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 job, Paul. good job i'm a Thank two you. like i i can do it but it wouldn't be great oh how interesting wow that's very interesting I, I think you could do it uh, honestly i think i think uh, my, my my take would be that we're I'm probably getting closer to one all the time because we are so forced to be like without reference all the time. I mean, I, that's, that would be my take on if again, an apple, I, I, I think I could like, you know, like Paul said, pick, pick a specific, if you're doing granny Smith or something like that, and then creating and coloring it, I could probably get closer to a variety of an apple. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to still go to only because, I struggle sometimes. And I, I really have to see something in a form before I can, you know, can like say that I've got it. Um, but that's so a great, have, that's a great to, question. You'd have to see it first. And then you think that if you took it away, you could directly mimic what you, what you just saw. Uh, I'm not, 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 not see the actual object, but more see, um, like I, if I saw, saw something that, like, cause I'm so subtractive in my brain. Like if I saw something that looked, like the shape of an apple, if I was going to sculpt it, and I, I had that idea, I, then it would be easier. Um, sure. Again, but if I did see, if I if I had a glimpse, it would be like cheating. I'd be like looking at cheat sheet. I'd be like, oh, there we go. Okay, <laughs> and I got it. But but yeah, yeah. I, to me, it's more. That's a great question, honestly, Stephanie. It's like, yeah, really I, I I think I'm I think I could I can be a zero because I was thinking about this. Like I, and actually a, an apple to me sounds very simple to me. Uh -huh. Like I could, I could draw it. I could do it with any, any drawing medium. I could uh, draw it. I could do it super detailed. I could do it very, I could do it very simplistic, but also uh, carving. If, I don't even carve. I've carved very few times. I think I could carve something that looks like an apple um, just from watching everybody. So I think I'm a zero uh, McFragile. You could be a four though then. Is it a four? Is it, it was, like the, the outline of the apple. Five or wait, so five is nothing. Okay. Four, four is the outline. Three, three is like black and white. Five yeah. is like an icon. And wait, what did you say you were? Zero. I can do whatever it is. What it, he I can said do all. He would draw a picture and you would try and eat it. That's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. how he, he's below. He's below a one, which is which is. <laughs> Yeah, they uh, actually uh, we Google the image. I I'll look up the image right now. Okay. So you know what this sounds like more than a question, Stephanie. It sounds, a like next, it sounds like the next time that you come on, no. we all have to do an apple without any reference from oh, our. I I would be media. willing to draw an apple without like that's easier for me than trying to like do my my like. Well, so is drawing for me. Yeah, yeah, I <laughs> would draw an apple. Into, I just, tearing into a squash. It. How do you know I'm not cheating though, Paul? I could put an apple. <laughs> Let's have an I apple off camera, it. just like right it, below the camera. Gotta, this whole conversation, my hands could. This could be recorded from like four <laughs> hours ago. This could, thing could already be done. <laughs> yeah, it's all magic. Is, is all this long. what it's called? Uh, Aphasia. Where I thought that was facial blindness. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, I'm just asking. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, I thought to, that's what I don't know. It was just something I saw, and I immediately sent it to all my friends. So my my oldest group of girlfriends, uh, our text group is called Tapas. I named it because we're ladies in our 30s. And um, I was like, "Hey, ladies, what do you guys see?" And they were all like, well, "I see." And then they were answering, and I was like, "No fucking way!" Like I'm an artist, and I am. I don't feel like I'm a one. I don't think I can do. That. Like I truly, I think artists are the example of. Is that a thing? 
you know, if you show you show a really excellent artist and their work and their their ability to make a really excellent looking apple, and then you ask them to do it without a reference, and then that is the the tried and true example of if that's a thing. Let me ask you a question. Did you ever, and this is kind of slightly off topic, but did you ever have a um, a moment in your life where you where you said, I'm not an artist, I'm not an artist, and then all of a sudden that's one fine. day you said, you said I am an artist because you 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 say you know I'm an artist and, and that's that's it. I I struggle like saying I know. I'm, I'm a sculptor. I, know. I struggle saying out loud that I'm an artist, and it's just because I, I have all these lofty um, people that I you know admire that I can't I can never say I'm not in their I'm not in their category, but I do I love art you know and and, and it's but then other people will say oh shit dude you're an artist you know you you got it you know but so did you ever was there a break point where you said okay. The stuff I'm making is art, and I am an artist. I'd love to know that kind of moment. Do you have, do you have a moment like that? I only started saying that when that became my full-time job. When I wasn't making full-time money off of it, I, I never said, I'm an artist. I said, I'm a whatever my job is, mm. and I'm good at art. Like I, I, the word, the, the phrase I'm an artist sounded so pretentious and douchey to me. I hated it. I was like, no, I can't, I can't even put myself in that category because that feels very, cause you know, and honestly, I feel like our society does it to us because so often like a kindergartner will be coloring and someone will be like, oh, I didn't know your son was such a good artist. And it's just, it's such an easy thing to say (laughs) that people just, you know. No one thinks it's worth anything. So it's just, it sounds silly to say it unless you're making money off of it. And that's unfair, honestly. That's a good distinction. Yeah, the the money thing. Yeah, that's great. I agree. Because growing up, that's that's, it. Yes, there it is. Oh, there it it is. Thanks, Mick. Oh, and aphasia is like brain damage where you forget how to imagine things. (laughs) So I think I'm a two. (laughs) I might, my middle name might just be aphasia. So Bruce Willis has aphasia? Oh no! Yeah, Did no, he... isn't that what he has? He has dementia. No, but he. Oh, I think McFarlane has put a different, a different, a different Bruce Willis. <laughs> it's just terrible. Dementia no. and aphasia are two different things, apparently. Okay, sorry. That's horrible. right. Right. Well, Brad Pitt is facial it's, blood. It's in the news, so I mean, <laughs> it's all that's the uh, very sad to hear. But yeah, really. For sure. Some people can only imagine the outline of an apple. That's crazy how the brain works. Yeah, I, I think I know some of those people, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they, they're also horrible drivers. Let me. Yes, they, they also can only draw. <laughs> they can also only draw stick figures. That's yeah. another thing. And then they always say that. that then they tell you that's all they can draw. That's they, the, oh, they can't even. That's what it is. I can't I even can draw, draw a stick, a stick figure. figure. So oh, is is this true. describing it or or trying to is, actually like put pen to paper or pencil to paper and actually draw it from memory? No, that's just okay. my little creative additive to it. This is just basically people Added. saying this. If you tell someone, think of an apple. Okay. There's varying uh, levels of what people come up with, and these okay. are these are the varying levels essentially. I don't. I mean, but I believe it because I've talked to a number of people. Wait, that's yeah. an apple? Oh, I had it all wrong. <laughs> that's an apple. Yeah. Oh, oh, Jesus! I couldn't. Even, I didn't know that was an apple. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta go back to school. Well, and <laughs> not, nowadays, people would say, like, you know, a computer. They would associate an apple with or, a like computer. the apple icon. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Just like or a or just something associated with like computers or something like that. And sure. what's so, I I know this because. Um, did you know that the actual, the, you know why there's a there's actually a bite out of the apple in the Apple logo? Oh, I saw this documentary. Uh-oh. Why, maybe? It's, it's B-Y-T-E. It's, yeah. Ah, bite. <laughs> yeah. B-I-T-E. I, we, we are watching. learning so- <laughs> I think we're gonna, we're gonna mix it. Mickey. I think what we're gonna do is because of this thing and and what you just said, we're gonna be kind of relegated to the education side of the. Uh, <laughs> of YouTube. We just we're learning so much tonight. This is Seriously, amazing. we we need to be on that masterclass uh, website with yeah. uh, Gordon Ramsay and Pharrell. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, 
I it's did. you know it to me it, it honestly sounds like a great topic for a show that we all get yeah, together could, again in the near yeah. future and we pick a subject and without any reference whatsoever i mean that's what has to happen but it I has to be like something that's very you know readily accessible in memory like a bicycle or something yeah well well, but we, I was, but we I was kind of thinking a little less so. carving a bicycle. You can draw a bicycle all you want. <laughs> carving one out of a butternut squash has its limitations. <laughs> a bicycle made but for two. Won't. But we oh, won't even know now it. Now we're going to do that whole chestnut. Now it's engineering. <laughs> Something that everybody knows what it looks like, and there's no, you know. like um, know. Yeah, like uh, a I'm unicycle. Around, I'm like, uh, shit, everything looks hard now. <laughs> like a butternut squash. A banana. A banana. That's easy. Yeah, That's I, I get a banana easy. butter. Could, a banana is not as hard as an apple, if you ask me. Because the way that the stem is and the way that the leaf is on the apple and the varying, like the spotting, yeah. there's a lot of variation in the skin color. You know, bananas are a little more straightforward, I feel. Yeah, Whatever but you know, from apple picking, as we do live in the Northeast, if you do it correctly, you don't get said leaf on the apple because you'd be hurting true. it. You have to push and twist. Like everybody knows. Push wow. Push wow. I'm like, yes. I've not heard the tree for the next year. got to get on the learning side of things. I mean, this is amazing. Oh, push my God. When my kids pull an apple, nine other apples fall. They just like, <laughs> and they just rain apples. Like, oh, God. It's raining apples. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, we never did that when I was a kid, but we did go blueberry picking. Oh, and I we love it. Like, I was just like, pop them in our mouth when our mother yeah, was like, looking. Yeah, exactly. One one for the bag, one for you. One for the bag, one for you. Yeah. I love blueberries. Yeah. Oh you God. never went apple picking as a kid? I, maybe we did. I don't remember. We we had apples in our yard. Oh, oh, Connecticut. Everybody yeah. has apples in Well, their Vermont, yard. too. I grew up mostly in Vermont. Vermont? As, as a small kid, I was in Vermont. You must have climbed apple trees. That's probably why you forgot. Because that's why you have a fascia. <laughs> That's why you can't draw an apple. You can't remember them because you were just like encompassed by them. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and now she does fish too. Yeah. So Speaking is that a feather? Of, I would love some sushi. This is this reminds me. <laughs> what is the feather? Is the feather actual feather? Feather. Oh no, that's no, that's not a feather. That's um I don't even know what that is. It was like for um like uh floral arrangements there was like this stuff that came Whoa. with it and i just broke it down and used it for that wow, wow. that is amazing because that i did a battle with that piece for a while too so how is that viewed because is, is it on the wall flat like that or is it on the ground no it's on a table and i just took okay. an aerial photo of it oh, i love cool. the aerial photo of it that to me like somebody that does like japanese tattoo work would want that totally. in the shop instantly oh, yeah. i put that one up for auction there's some pieces that i feel like um though i will just set a price and i'll put it up and first come first serve but then there's other pieces that i think i have a fair amount of people that were interested in this animal the last time i made it so maybe i'll put it up for auction and see if oh. I can, you know get more people to you know have an opportunity to buy it because not everyone's on instagram when i put up a piece for the you know sale and if it's first come first serve if you have right. a job like what are you gonna do so yeah. what if you awesome. did like a countdown yeah. thing like sort of like this will go up for auction on such and such a yeah day. yeah I don't know. oh uh, that's um honey the mama's a llama honey yeah, yeah. <laughs> a great book the mama's I, a llama. I, that's another one of my favorite the, my, my top three of yours i'll just throw it out there whiskey uh, neat right. honey and then midge the crow. Oh, thank you. Midge is one of my favorites too. I don't know. I'm the first name basis with her work. I know. <laughs> I, 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 sorry, I just I'm in such a huge it fan. just made I'm, me so happy. <laughs> he's got like a text thread going with him. Right <laughs> no, I swear, I'm just like such a fan. I, I like I, I found like anyway, I'm just uh, there's there's stuff that you put out that I'm like more enamored with, but this is one certainly, and then of course, your little horsey. But um, but then the crow one, I just have a you know affiliate, yeah, you know, a feeling. I I just I, that that was so well done, like the the turn head and everything. Just it almost looked like I mean, how is that even trashed? That's the beauty of it, because like when you look at these from afar, they're beautiful sculptures, and then 
and you have to remember that they're trash and that's the that's yeah. the uh the exciting part about all of it it's just like you know and and one cool thing too uh, i'm gonna stop gushing in a second but i'm one more second you also do really cool things when you when you say like okay this is me five years ago this is me now like the lion i think you did recently yeah um and and the growth and the and the I, I, artistic maturity and whatever it is right is stunning the photography i mean everything is just like um so like the it, it, i anyway a huge fan but i i love even that you put that up because that's pretty vulnerable saying like this is the stuff i used to make i thought was good and, and i i try to bury the old stuff i've done like, like oh god that was terrible and, you know no but it, it's so good to look at where you where you come yeah. since then you know what i mean yeah. like the the development is and people love seeing that too because so you don't know who you're inspiring like there's a lot of yeah. people that think that they suck and then you're just like okay well i also used to suck so mm. just you just keep here's going. evidence yeah yeah you know yeah but, hey, ask, but me we, week, ask me we, week to week and i'll affirm that I oh yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> Well, we're we're yeah. our worst critics. We 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 see the flaws. Yeah. Everybody else just sees the piece. Yeah. So it's like it, it, it doesn't matter what the level is. It's um. And the so. the years, the years that go the into years. it. Oh my god! Yes. And it's not even just the years on on what you're doing specifically. It's the years on what you did adjacent to that that informed what you're doing now and yeah. all mm -hmm. of the stuff in between. It's just like and just so many people. You know, that's why I like. This is so, this is so just like, uh, you know, nitpicking, but when people are like, I wish I had that level of talent, it kind of, it kind of, it doesn't upset me. Cause I don't, I don't think that they mean anything by it. I don't think they're even thinking about the words they're using, but it's not necessarily just talent. I do think that there's a degree of talent that I was born with. I think most artists can say that for themselves, but, um, it's more just an interest in what you're doing that's that's given you the ambition to keep trying at it. You just like yeah. it so much that you keep doing it and it makes right. you better at it. So it's more skill and uh, experience than it is talent per se, yeah. which yeah. I don't know that not, not everybody really thinks of it in those terms. A lot of people think that, you know, you just sat down one day and you were able to just carve a gargoyle out of a pumpkin and it's just like your first attempt at it and you're just born with this excellent ability but it it's a lot of work that goes behind it yeah it's a yeah, lot of what i think what it, yeah that that's exactly it uh, commitment is a great word i was going to say yeah. patience and persistence that's what they're saying that, that you stuck with this so long and got really good at it that's that's yeah. also what they're admiring it's as well sticking with it and honestly it's truly it's because it's it's so fun for the person that's doing it that they want to stick with it there's yeah. just this vested interest in wanting to get better at it that's the number yeah. one question that people say too mick is um or, or you'll hear people comment while you're working they're like well i don't have, oh I, I don't have any i don't have the patience for that right yeah, I don't. Well, either. there you go. That's what it takes. I, this is, I've said it before. This is our therapy. When I'm done, I'm wiped out. It's like somebody gave me a quaalude. I am like numb to the word. You, if you gave me a math problem, I just drool. But I, here's I, the thing, though. Nothing left. I see yeah. things too that I think I don't have the patience for that. So, like needle pointing, for example. But that doesn't look fun to me. Yeah. This yeah. is fun to me. So yeah. while I don't necessarily have the patience for it all of the time, it's it's so fun for me in terms of like the actual art of it and what goes into it and when it's going well, how amazing I feel doing it yeah. and all of the things that come with it that I'm willing to stick with it when it's not going well and when it is a, a test on my patience. But there's other things like needle pointing, for example, where that's not my passion. That's not something I'm interested right. in. It's not something I would ever want to really do. So right. it seems tedious to me. Yeah. So but for somebody that, somebody that likes needle point, it's the same feeling that you get. Right. Exactly. It's, a it's just, type it's, of art. Yeah. It's your interest in it. It's it's yeah. wanting to get better at it. It's loving it. It's it's kind of sticking with it through the good things and the bad things. Do you think Seven. we judge people that needle point that do needle point the same way? Or like, do you just sat down and did that? I legitimately <laughs> love needle pointing because I don't want to do it. Like, it looks, I'm like I can't it, even it imagine difficult. being interested, like or uh, crocheting and all that kind of stuff. Like, I I have such an appreciation for it. Or um. 
God, what's it called? The the neat the uh the needle felting of like oh, very felting. realistic cats and stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. Like <laughs> you talk about the you talk about the ones that make people that make like full animals out of mm -hmm. the Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that just seems like magic so actually to me because they're just poking at it and all of a sudden they have a skull and then all of a sudden there's a body and yeah, it's an art. It's a, it's certainly an art. It's excellent and it's something that I wouldn't have the patience for, but like so I watch them do it and I'm admiring it. So oh, yeah. we're anti chameleon and anti uh, needlepoint on this show. No way, man. <laughs> no, no, we love needlepoint. Hey, cool. I just it's don't cool. have the patience for it. Dan crocheting some of the best blankets I've ever had. <laughs> no, I, I, but, but you're, you're, you're so you're so right about like the, uh, the 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 love to do it. I mean, like like if I if I have a free moment, I will sit there and think to myself, do I have something to carve? And if the answer is no, then I'll find something else to do. But if the answer is yes, that's my first thing to go to because I love the process so much and and just like. Yeah. That and, and I imagine that's how it is with your art because you've got kind of a you know probably a a, a, a ton of garbage you know we'll call I it do. trash you know and so so it, inevitably if you, you've got other projects to, to start or, or even commissions you, you you can always go jump to it um, and and it brings you joy like the process of it brings me joy so I'm I'm always I'm always like you know trying to find a reason to do it and I think that's the big disc oh there he is. There's Midge. That's the one I like. Midge. Yeah, the, yeah, man. I agree. Like the pose is just oh, supernatural. So, how is that not? How is that trash? I. It just. I really lucked out with that piece that I had some really excellent materials to work with. The stuff that oh, yeah. I did for her uh, throat feathers and all of that really. So stuff that works that way that is that bendy and that easy to cut and that rigid, but also that flexible at the same time, you're really lucky if you get it to hold spray paint as well. Like those mm. are not typically things that you find in one material. So that oh, wow. shit is excellent. I use that all the time and I'm gonna be really sad when it runs out cause I don't know where I'm gonna find it again. Well, let's put a call out right now. <laughs> it was this lady, she reached out to me and she was in Bristol, which is like right next to me. And she was like, I have these mirror panel blinds and I don't want them anymore. Could you use them? And at the time I was just a little bit like, oh, I've got too much stuff. I don't think I can take them. And then I was like, you know, I looked at the picture and I was like, maybe. So I took them and I sat on them for like two months before I even looked at them. And then when I pulled them apart, I realized that all the material was excellent for various things. And I was just like, oh my God, what am I going to do when I don't have this anymore? Because this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like us and pumpkins. Hopefully they keep growing more. I don't know. Jesse has a question. How do you decide on the backgrounds that you make? Um, it depends on the piece. Um, so for this one, I painted the background. For, honestly, I've been doing this a lot more lately than I used to. But um, paint the background per first, thinking about what I'm making mm -hmm. and trying to work in kind of texture and color with the animal that I'm going to be doing. Um, and then I will cover the whole thing in like a butcher paper. And I'll sketch the animal on top of the butcher paper. So that way I can kind of see like a, a planogram of it. And then once the piece is created, I will cut away the paper and, you know, I'll wow. have the background intact behind it. I would rather do that over, um, you know, painting the background first and then taping everything. I hate taping. I don't know what it is. Like when I paint a room, I never tape my corners. I just like freehand it. I hate taping. <laughs> it's, if I can avoid it, I will try to do it. Very Mick, great. can you do me a favor real quick? Can you go back a couple slides to the little gremlin guy? Oh, it's like too sure. bad. Oh, Mike. <laughs> Mike. Oh, yeah. Now, where did this design come from? Because you, we always see you do like animals. Yeah. So this was for my nephew, Logan. So um, my sister, so she's got two kids, my twin sister. Um, when her daughter was born, she was like, I want a piece for her. So I made her a piece. And then when her son was born, she was like, same deal. I want a piece for Logan as well. So she, we talked about what she might want. She was like, I just want you to do something that you think is fun. And I know my sister and I was just like, I want you to want to put it in his room because she's very particular about decor and stuff. So I was like, what would you like to see? And she's like, I don't know, maybe like a little monster or you could do this. You could do this. He really likes dinosaurs right now. So I was like, well, I've already done a couple dinosaurs. So I've never done a monster. 
So let me just try to come up with a monster. So I was just like Googling different takes on cute monsters. And this is kind of a mashup of a couple different ideas. Like she was showing Loki, he's two. Um, so she was showing him pictures and like the one made him giggle. And she's oh. like, he likes this one. Um, he likes this one. Like the ones that we, like he got a reaction out of. So we kind of mashed him up a little bit. And then I just kind of went from there. And then I put the little dinosaur figure in, in his hand because he really likes dinosaurs right now. So I was like, if he doesn't like his face, at least he'll like the little dinosaur in his hand. And maybe we'll trade that out when he gets a little older and he likes other oh. things better. <laughs> yeah, see, that's awesome. I, I like because you have this, you're just completely creative, well-rounded, and you can design your own characters. Not, it, it's He definitely evolved. Hard. Like You can see the first slide of him with just the basketball like straight across the mouth. That's mm -hmm. more like what the sketch looked like. And I was like, I'm not into it. And then I like I started to like play with it a little bit. And I was like, I want him a little bit more like expressive. Like, yeah, really like, it up and yeah. just, like pulling it. Like, yeah. And, and then like the teeth and all that. And, you know, yeah. all that and the belly. The, I like the belly, you know, like the. The, you know the, the little thick arms and little skinny legs. I mean, he's he's a great little monster. And it's yeah. kind of bags under his eyes. I mean, the whole everything about it is great. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. the expressive mouth, but it's like smiling, but it's not smiling. And <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Thank you. So yeah. good, so good. Well, um, I hate to break it to everybody, Mickey. I, I I'm sorry. This is, is the worst, this is the worst part of my job. You that I Christmas do. every week. Uh, every week. I was we, having such a good time. Damn it, Mickey. The fastest so 90 minutes on the internet. But I wanted to go around and see uh, what the guys are carving here. So, Paul, I'm going to start with you. Oh, and uh, Sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, wow. I got to be careful blocking it out because I'm not using a lot of reference for anatomy, and I'm way off. He's going to have an oversized head, obviously. but So I'm going to – he's going to have that squat. I'll get rid of – this is pretty thick, so – I plan on getting rid of it and squaring this off to make like a the pillar, the corner of the building. And you know, the wow. feet and the hands will be hanging on there. And then I'm gonna I'll add some big wings. And then of course make him look um what the hell it's, is uh, agony. Agony. He's gonna be in so much agony. <laughs> you never seen so much. Yeah, so yeah, it's hard to wow. It's, gotta, it's just we're blocking. Yeah, There's a lot of work to go. Ah, it's all it looks looking great. Thanks. Matt. So mine, I, I I'm kind of taking a little different tack. I, I saw this. I saw the, the stem as okay. kind of an arm. Like, oh, if you look at it from the side, it kind of looks like an arm or a hand or something like that. So yeah. right now he's kind of more. This is probably hard to see. Let's see if I can move. So see he's if kind I'm... of like they kind of look dog looking to me, like dog or. So from a side, you can see he's got kind of like a, a nose and like an upturned mouth. And so he's, anyway, it's um, definitely a work in progress. But I, I definitely want to add some horns and then maybe make some uh, another arm or something over here or feet. So he's like holding onto the edge of a building. I, I don't know. It's, Why don't you give him a whole body? Why don't you make him yeah, like I'll a get, life-size <laughs> gargoyle? I'm going to get a couple pumpkins and maybe um, – yeah, because you have play, them. you know, something. You know, <laughs> wow. Hey, by the way, before Mickey, before you go off of him, that looks great so far. Go back to go back to Matt. Hi. Go back to hey, Matt. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> the pumpkin behind. I, yeah. I, I want to get yeah. a look at that one. First of all, blasphemy that you have pumpkins in February. Shame on you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, man, that's a great one. He's he's he crapped his he's pants. anatomically correct too. <laughs> yeah, he's Whoa. got he's got a, you know, oh, he's, <laughs> he crapped his pants already, but wrecked yeah. yeah, we'll him. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to edit that in post because he, he definitely looks like he uh <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm so thankful. I so I, I have a I, I I think I mentioned I don't I think we did it earlier in the show, but um I a friend of mine uh, has a pumpkin patch and they saw actually pumpkins in the field. And just yesterday, I picked a couple that looked less rotten than others, and um, and this was still okay. So, anyway, will we be able to have pumpkins grown for us by June? I thank mean, God for yeah. I, I have like four or five plants started, Paul. And if God willing, that. we'll have. I mean, I I'm gonna say no, but you know, if we get lucky, we'll have some pumpkins in uh, 
just keep, lizard. just Must fertilize them, fertilize. We're not going to eat them, so poison the crap out of them. And oh yeah, they just <laughs> have steroids. They have steroids. <laughs> so Stephanie, we're trying to. We're, we're, we need pumpkins for June because we're going to Monster Palooza out in California, uh -huh. which is kind of our that's our Star Trek convention essentially. So, do you do conventions at all? I never have. No, never have. I, I, yeah. I would. I would assume that one of these bigger conventions, like with like really world renowned artists at it, you'd clean up. People. I mean, I've, I've attended conventions. I've never. I've never been a booth at a convention. But last time I talked to you guys, you were about to go to Monster Palooza. How was that last time? Well, we're going back. It was beautiful. <laughs> was it amazing? Did you so love it? So much fun. It was it, everywhere you looked. It was just, oh my goodness. And then this this year they have like Robert England's going to be there from Nightmare on Elm Street, and oh, wow. so that like a different vibe with the, all all the guests and yeah. Oh, it's cool. <laughs> and v, v Neil's going to do. Did she say this on the show? Maybe I should wait till after the show. What you well, said? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be that guy. I'll tell you after we go. I'll tell you where after. Like they have a theme going yeah, no. for like because they do the live makeups, the whole process, and then the, the characters walk around. That's and then you get us good. carving squash. I mean, I, that's the real reason I, everybody. Yeah, yeah, that's why people normally go. Yeah, because they want to see some people yeah. carving squash. They're like, get out of the way, Hollywood Oscar winner. Everybody's like, stop it. People love that shit. I love it. Well, that would be it, that would be the stuff that I would be excited to see. I'd be like, oh, <laughs> could, the, could the cast of Halloween two move out of the way? We need to go carve some butternut squash. <laughs> yeah, that's cool and all, but that, you kind of that would be that would be my jam. I would be all about that. <laughs> well, good. I'll get you tickets. You guys, you 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 guys, you guys yes. can come out and see the show. I yeah. honestly, I would be very excited to go to that. That sounds amazing. Yeah, it, it it's, it's, a, it's a guy's weekend for us because we get to just hang out with like really cool artists and stuff like that. So for, for no other reason, we're going to be there just sculpting squash and like trying, trying to hang with really cool artists. So if you yeah, make yeah. it out there, then I mean, wow, what, yeah. a, what a treat that would be. Yeah, Thank we you? don't sell anything. No, we don't make any money. I mean, it's we not, like, not, not for money making. It's for soul. In exactly. exactly. And we might have one, maybe two beers. <laughs> throughout the weekend through we gotta spread them out i mean yeah no maybe one a day <laughs> the, the iv trip with the keg helps so yeah that's <laughs> you don't actually thing. have to drink it it's just constantly mixed. <laughs> paul told there. me about a service that i didn't even know exists in california to get uh to get beer which is amazing what an amazing find oh so, yeah i taught him about drizzly uh, yeah we have that <laughs> Oh yeah, like, everybody had it. I thought, but if they have it in California, <laughs> it's, it's Uber like, booze. It's well, great. Well, they have it on the East Coast because we drink here all the time. I, I've so. lived in California for twenty-five years, and I have never heard of it. <laughs> well, it's new. It's pretty new, Mickey. It's like it's like Uber for booze, but I, I think it's only like a few years old. We don't even have it in Arizona, so we have to drag our butts over to the actual store. <laughs> Barbarians. Oh well, we I know here. exactly. <laughs> yeah, old, old style. Like, yeah. You gotta leave your house. <laughs> Man, it's like a thousand degrees, so you could die. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you want to see more of Stephanie's work, please go to her Instagram. Anywhere else we can see your work? Um. Well, my Instagram is really the place that I try to direct people because um, I it's the most complete portfolio. But I'm on Facebook as well under Sugar Fox. And I have a TikTok under Sugar Fox underscore art as well. Coolest name ever, Sugar Fox. That's, it that's is pretty awesome. awesome. Oh, thank that's you. Awesome. Have you ever made a Sugar Fox? As I've made people? a number of foxes, but never a Sugar Fox. Uh, <gasps> oh, mission. Somebody, somebody hit her up. I don't want this to be over yet. Just, let's just talk one more hour. <laughs> Sorry. This is where you can find us uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok. Give us a follow, like, and subscribe, all that stuff that helps us uh, tremendously for what we're trying to accomplish here at Carvers and Creators. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, it's such a pleasure. You're so talented. You're such a sweet, nice, uh, you're, you're literally the sugar fox. You're so sweet. She's one of the and, best. Uh, the best. Thank you. Yeah. We appreciate <laughs> Thank it you so guys. much. I really appreciate you guys having me not only on 
the first time, but now back a second time, I really. really so we're gonna have to have you again. I mean, this is. I mean, we keep going. Third so time. we'll have you on again. And I think next time I'm going to do the Apple thing. And you're going to do Apple. <laughs> I will tools. draw an Apple with you guys. I will. Okay. I will draw it. And, and uh, I hope it looks like a put banana. chameleon on the board? <laughs> or no? Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're against chameleons, right? <laughs> we, well, we want to see the word like out that the octopus like is the better color changer in the animal. Ooh. Yes. yes. <laughs> octopus. We'll do octopus. That'd be a hard pumpkin, right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. You need like extras. <laughs> oh, yeah. A, a chameleon, chameleon squirrel? squirrel. <laughs> That's easier than an octopus. A chameleon squirrel. That's, That's true. <laughs> That's true. Well, we'll see you next Thursday with another Carvers and Creators. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Good night.